Is there more crypto pain ahead? Uh, it's possible. You've probably seen this morning that Bitcoin has been on a tear upwards, which is great. But even if that turns around and there's more pain ahead, I have a different philosophy on crypto on how to get rich from crypto more than the day to day stuff. And I want to talk about that, about how people really get rich from crypto so that even if the market does go down some more and that's fine. Or if it doesn't go down some more, that's fine, too. Today, we're going to get into a deeper philosophy on what I've seen. I've been here five years and you know what I've seen? I've seen less than 5% of people that come into crypto, even from five years ago and four years ago, you can look back on the charts and see there was this amazing opportunity. And you know, only 5% of the people that I got started with made massive money from crypto. And maybe it's even less than 5%. Let's talk about that today. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel. I'm your host, Jay Rain. And if you like money in crypto and you're looking for a seasoned investor's take on the market, join the Rainmaker family. Do note, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a crypto investor myself. And I do own or plan to own most of what I talk about this channel because I simply don't talk about the cryptos and projects I don't believe in. Hey, what's going on? Three Doritos later, too. We do want to thank our Patreon members. We have a private Discord that our Patreon members get access to. And we just finished our pre-stream that we do on Fridays. So through Patreon, they get access to our Discord, which is where we have all the interaction. Now, make it rain on that like button. Strap in for the show. And let's talk about getting rich in crypto. We did have a great video earlier this week with Doctor of Stuff joining us to talk about NFTs, VV, and the future of VV. And if you missed that and you have any interest in NFTs and VV at all, you might want to check that episode out. Now, getting rich in crypto is something I've talked about a lot because that's why I came here. Isn't that why all of us are here? But 95% of people don't do well in crypto, which is a striking number. That's absolutely effing terrible. And what I mean is by that, they sell at losses and don't make good money. Now, I didn't realize this at first. It seemed when I came in like everyone would make money in crypto. And though it is true that we are still early enough, everyone can make money in crypto, but only if they follow a few basic principles. The hard truth is most people don't do that. And this fact worries me. It worries me that we're on the greatest opportunity of our financial lives, and yet so many people are screwing it all up. Bad. This is a once-in-a-generation technology shift that has the opportunity for almost everyone in the world in the Internet to participate in. <clears throat> but if you do the wrong things, your results will be devastating, and most do the wrong things. Why? Well, because we're humans and we are hardwired to buy the tops and sell the bottoms. You might think to yourself, but Rain, I'm down on all my positions since I got started nine months ago. I'm not making money. If you're here and you haven't sold and left like many people did, in other words, they bought higher and sold lower, if you're still here, you are actually on track and they are not. And you're on track way more than you realize. You might be thinking, but I need to learn technical analysis so I can learn how to trade down markets and make money even while the market is trading sideways because I see all these examples of somebody that just made 50X on their trades over the last month. Can I share a secret with you? Most traders, and I mean most, like almost all of them, lose money. Though it seems like a solution, and learning technical analysis is very helpful. But trading day to day and week to week, most traders will lose money. Story, I was listening to Tom Bilyeu, and he was talking with a family member, I believe, or a family friend that loved trading and had been trading professionally and actively for 15 years on stocks during a period where the stock market had gone way <coughs> excuse me 
gone way, way up, would you have guessed that his position in entirety over the 15 years was down from what he had put in? Even though he was consumed with research every single day. There has to be a better way than that, right? There has to be a way that people without expert abilities, that with some extra time, a little bit of time on top of our day jobs, can follow and do well over a period of four to eight years, right? Now, personally, I've always been interested in efficiency. The old saying, work smarter, not harder. That doesn't mean I didn't work. When I worked for a company called Accenture, I had 105-hour work weeks. That was part of it. And, you know, it, it was good. I learned a lot of valuable skills while working there. But that was working hard and learning some principles so that later I could work smarter. But that's always been my goal to work smarter, right? Because I don't know about you, but I want to have a lot of beach time in my future. I want to be on the beach, maybe on my phone. I get a few emails done and other things. And I'm good for the day, right? That's what I call working smarter, not harder. But in order to get there, you have to have a lot of assets and a lot of wealth that you've accumulated to be able to have that be your life. So in crypto, I ask myself every day, especially when I started, what is the very best way to get the massive upside of this technology shift? Secondly, is there a way that anybody could do it? Yes, there is. And what's funny is the way isn't all that hard. I mean, it is and it isn't. It's simple. So it's not all that complex. But simple isn't always easy. Want to say hey to Ivan joining us, Nurse Cooper and Josh C. What's up, guys? All right. I started my crypto journey in the middle of the 2017 bull run. By the middle, I mean it was October. So, yeah, later in the bull run than I wish it was. And it was easy then to feel like a genius when you start in October of 2017 and everything goes up, including my fully honest, pretty mediocre picks. But then only to have my portfolio come crashing down a few months later as the parabolic bull run of 2017 ended in a big, better said, huge retracement. That really kicked me off digging in and researching more about crypto, its market cycles, and the technology, and where was this all going? That confirmed to me, yes, this is where the tech is going, and it will be massive, as I really dug into the research during that harder bear market. So even though prices were way down, everything was savage. My portfolio was less than I put, had put in, which was frustrating because I put about 15000 in. I think it peaked at about 165000 and it was probably now worth about $3,000, which is not a fun place to be, especially knowing I could have taken 50% profits out and I would have had way more money. But, you know, mistakes, it's water under the bridge. I can't go back and rewind time. All I can do is learn from it. So I knew that I was in the right place. The second question was though, how to make it rich during this tech shift in a way where I don't have to just depend on getting lucky. My background was really real estate investing for 20 years and had made some big mistakes in my early years that took a long time to make up from but had learned that every investment is a risk. But as you get better, you can take smarter risks. Probably this helped me a lot as I found myself in the bear market of 2018, 2019, and 2020, where I really devised a strategy. And I'm going to give you a very oversimplified version of that strategy. Are you ready? Now, are you sure you're ready? Because this is life changing. So make sure you're ready for it. Here you go. Buy low so that you can sell high. Yeah, I know you're thinking, but Rain, I already knew that. But did you? Do you know that? 
Well, have you been scooping up great projects while they are out of the limelight? Have you been digging into research and finding projects with solid teams and great project ideas and buying while nobody else is talking about them? In fact, the media is saying Bitcoin is going down further and oh my gosh, El Salvador is their huge mistake in buying Bitcoin. Because if you are, then you do understand that. And you know what? I suspect a lot of you do understand that. But some of you that are listening, maybe this is your first time. Maybe you haven't yet heard that, right? I call it buying when it's boring. Which is a way of saying when it's out of the limelight or the spotlight, right? And everyone's kind of fudding on it. Now, if you've been doing that, then you can absolutely say you understand the buy low part of that equation. Now, my special term I use for it is buying when it's boring. Because right now the market feels pretty boring overall compared to the excitement somebody feels when we're in the middle of a bull run and prices are shooting through the roof, which is a fun time to be when you've taken positions when everything was low. That period though is often a risky time to buy and also often a very terrible time to buy. Why? Because that is usually the sell high time. We'll talk about sell high time in a bit. And Bob, I appreciate the super chat. I'm gonna put that first on my list when I get into questions and answers. So let's say you're doing this 100% correct right, right now and you are researching identifying projects you think have a strong likelihood of success and then making smart buys. What next? Well, there is another important component to this that if you miss, you risk losing everything this cycle and that is diversifying. If you put all your eggs in one basket and that basket crashes and burns, I like to think of it this way. If I diversify across at least 10, it sets me up for a situation so that even if five of them fail completely. Now, if I've done a lot of research and stuff, probably five won't fail. But even if five, because some will, even if five completely fail, but perhaps two of them, because I was doing a lot of research and identified strong teams with a strong narrative, two of them go 100x or higher from the bottom to the top. Three of them do pretty good when the rains come which is when the market goes crazy. I call that when the rains come. Your overall is still over 30X, which is life changing during a four year period. And if you can do that one more time during the following four year period, your financial life is completely different. You might say, but rain, if I just put it all in one basket, and that project does 100x, I will be farther ahead, which is true. But because we don't have a magic crystal ball, we don't know for sure which baskets will make it and which will crash and burn, which is exactly why I choose diversity. If I could rewind time back to 2019 in the bear market with what I know now, I could have put everything on exactly the ones that I knew that do the very, very best. And I would be up another 40x over where I am today. But none of us have that ability. So I follow a pattern that will still work even if I can't see into the future. Speaking of the future, that leads us into the sell high part of the equation. Did you know that often, even people who have positioned themselves well, leave the sell high part out of the equation? Why? Because it's hard to sell when things are going up like 20% per day. But if we reach a parabolic move and you don't take your gains, you will see a massive retracement. Now, probably you'll look back and you'll be like, man, I could have gotten 50% more had I held on till this exact point. Yes, it's true. But you don't know when the end of that comes. So if you did buy really well, though, if you miss that time to sell and it retraces, 
maybe it doesn't retrace even what you bought at, but you will have missed an opportunity to realize some massive, massive gains. That's the secret. Buy low so you can sell it high. And that was a quick summary of exactly why those work. And don't forget diversification. And the secret we're talking about today, everyone knows it and so few do it. Now, if you're here watching this episode today, my guess is I'm completely preaching to the choir to most of you. Why? Because you're here during the period that everything is low. And though it could go lower, and you're hearing lots of that in the news, this is what every bottom feels like. I want to do this episode live because I want to get into some of your picks, too, that you have researched and love, and look at them together as well as hear your thoughts and questions. I do appreciate every one of you who have joined me on this journey. We're going to achieve something that is magical. So far, this journey has been cool because of the brotherhood that we have created in both our free Telegram, which you can join below, down below, as well as the Patreon, which will give you access to our closed and private Discord. Now, each of you who have found this Rainmaker family and who have joined, I appreciate that. And I think you see what is coming too. Many of you are positioning your portfolios in ways that I'm excited to see what heights you reach when we have our next blow off top. Rao Pal said on Tom Bilyeu's channel six days ago that he can't wait for his next income distribution coming next quarter to put way more in because even though he has tons in, he feels extremely underinvested right now. All right, I'm gonna jump to Bob's super chat and then I'll we'll do the giveaway and then I'm gonna get into <coughs> your thoughts and projects that you want to look at together and we'll do a little bit of research all right you guys ready for the giveaway so the way this works is those that uh whoever gives me the answer first right now it might show up on your screen as being first that doesn't matter because it instantly puts it on your screen it's when it hits my screen whoever's first you might have to do a little bit of research now one chain has a really big thing going on <coughs> that's exciting. And it even got retweeted by a top stablecoin CEO, gave Chain a retweet a little bit over a week ago. And I wanna know who that CEO was. First person that tells us is our winner. And they win 251. Now Juan has been really good and um, created a strategic relationship and they give us one every month to give away for our live streams. And so thanks to them, they have some of the best cross-chain bridge technology out there. It's called trustless cross-chain bridges, which sounds a little bit complex, right? There's trusted cross-chain bridges and trustless cross-chain bridges. Without going into all the details, trustless cross-chain bridges are way, way safer than trusted Trusted means you actually have to trust that nobody will cheat or you kind of have to hope that nobody will cheat. So the, the name on trusted cross-chain bridges is a little bit misleading. It means you have to trust them. <coughs> Trustless means you don't have to trust them because incentives are set up in a way so that people can't steal more than they would lose. All right, no responses yet. <coughs> Anyone? Anyone? So I guess if it takes too long, maybe I get the answer. But um, yeah, it's a hard one. So while we're working on that, I am going to <coughs> share an article that came out. Crypto analyst reckons, and this comes from Stardust Runner, who sent me some great news articles. Um, this one I want to share today. A crypto analyst reckons off-chain Bitcoin activity is in bull market right now. What's interesting is um, this came out a few days ago. The charts on Bitcoin actually this morning went crazy. In fact, let's look at this. Look at this. 
what the heck is this going on right here? Oh, let me share my screen because you all can't see it. What the heck is that? Wow. Blowing and maybe it goes up and touches this. We'll see. It is off on a run. My goodness. Yeah, so that started. Gosh, this is on the hourly. Let me go to 15 minute. See when that really started. 23. Goodness. Here it was trending sideways and it broke up and it broke up hard. So what, uh, about 12 hours ago, it's been running like crazy. So two days ago, though, crypto analyst reckons off-chain Bitcoin activity is in a bull market right now. Zach Voel, a prominent crypto market researcher, has opined that while the pioneer cryptocurrency may be in a bear market in terms of price, there are signs to indicate that it's seemingly bullish adoption with regards to off-chain activity. Now, part of the reason I had to share this article is because, where is it in this article? They actually call Bitcoin being boring right now. <laughs> and so I was like, they're using my terminology. Uh, they're, this is because the price trend indicates a massive drop in the volatility of Bitcoin, therefore making it boring to the investors who may soon seek out its rivals, such as Ether, because Bitcoin's too boring. Anyway, um, so I had to share that article. I found that funny. All right, let me get to uh, Bob the Builder's question. What's your biggest bag on the low cap coins? I'm very thankful you're still making videos. Also, if you had to choose one, Freeway Token or Omi. If I could only choose one, I would choose Omi. But I I literally almost have as much free weight token in value as I do OMI. I, I have big, big bags of both. Uh, free weight token I see is riskier. However, further upside, but riskier. The, the chances that free weight token collapses over the coming five years are higher, in my opinion, than om the OMI token. Realize that any company can still collapse some crazy news could come out and any company could collapse but um thank you bob for that what's my biggest bag on the low cap altcoins um probably mm, well so there's some big investments i've made on long-term projects that aren't even to the stage where they have a coin out yet and so that would by far be my biggest bag um in devio uh by far i invested a ton with them like a year and a half ago with inequity in the company which i can convert to tokens but their tokens not even launched yet so by far that's my biggest bag on any one single t thing um omi is one of my biggest bags and freeway token is up there too um not far behind where omi is so fantastic question bob thank you for the super chat let's see if i got any no answer yet. Let me give out the question one more time. So, <coughs> one chain has some big upgrades coming up, and a top stablecoin CEO. Now, how many stablecoins are out there? How many CEOs of stablecoins are out there? You might check their Twitters and follow their Twitters back to about nine, ten days ago. Which top stablecoin CEO gave OneChain a retweet over a, a bit over a week ago? All right. We will let that still simmer. Um, let's get into some of your questions. So let me scroll up. <sighs> Thank you for the kind words, Edson. Thanks, three to readers layer two says, guys, don't forget to hit the like um, button on the video. We appreciate you helping grow the family. Look, it's kind of like starfish on the beach, right? <clears throat> not everyone will get this and not everyone can, you know, when we share this, we'll get it. But it's like the, those that do and really run with this, this is a strategic way of approaching things that works right 
buying when it's boring and sticking around and making a long-term commitment. This absolutely works every time it's tried and it's followed right. So you have to learn to rewire so that when you have FOMO, um, but you already have a position in it, that's the time you start taking profits instead of buying. And when you're feeling like, oh my gosh, it might keep going to zero, if, if the project still has good things and has a good potential to survive, that's one I bought. And so you're literally um, just doing the opposite of what 95% of people do. And that's why that's why 95% of people lose money in crypto rather than make amazing money. The people that I know that are now millionaires from crypto over the past number of years, um, in the past four or five years, um, they all did this. They, they didn't consciously do this. They didn't have it break broken down. They just subconsciously is like, well, yeah, I'm going to buy low and I don't care what all these people are saying and then sell high. So it was it's a small fraction of the people that I knew that I got started with that did those did that and had these amazing results. OK, we have some guesses. I'm sailing on 2021, says USDT. Well, I need the CEO's name. Robin Weissman, it is not. Ada? <laughs> no, no, it's a top stable coin. So there's there's only a couple top stable coins out there. And I'll give you a hint. It's not USDT. All right. So let's see. What questions do you guys want us? Okay, three Doritos later. Were you saying research ADA? We can talk about ADA. I like where the charts are at on ADA. In fact, let's pull up trading view. Um, ADA is one of the ones I made a killing on. Um, <clears throat> and, and we'll talk about that. And it's at a point that it it's, ooh, I like where the price is at. Let's try to get an ADA one where we're going to have lots of history on it. Which one of these is going to give us the longest history? Let's go to the weekly charts. Let's see what kind of history we have. We want uh, maybe the daily. All right. Yeah, decent enough history, right? So this is where I started buying ADA at 11 cents. So this follows really well along with what I did. Now, Charles Hoskinson took a different approach, um, which is build it slow and build it right, right? So take the time to architect it out, hire the right people to solve the mathematical problems of how the algorithm is going to work and how everything's going to work before I even start building any lines of code. And it's surely a way that takes a lot of time to do. And he hired some really good researchers and mathematicians to work with him and come up with the architecture before he even started building because they did an ICO like way back in like, I don't know, 2016 or 2015. So here we are in 2018. I first heard about it on its way up here. And I think it was like at 14 cents and it went to 24 cents. Ended up peaking at, what is this doing? I thought it, it peaked at $1.40. But, so it was already coming down before this. It peaked at $1.40 in the previous cycle. It just doesn't show it here. So it's coming down. I started buying it when it hit like 12 or 11 cents. And I kept buying while it was boring here. And then it did this. Now, unfortunately, I didn't sell. I, I only sold some of my ADA because we had this really early pump that I expected would go further. But I didn't know what was going on because it shouldn't have pumped so early. So I thought my first real take profit zone was $6. I did end up taking some money out of this, though. It wasn't fully like a take profit so much as there are some other things that I really, really liked that were way down. And my ADA position was way, way up, like 100x. So I sold some of my ADA to roll into other things that were really, really cheap. So it wasn't even a true take profit. It was just a rebalance that I did. Um, and... Thankfully, ADA is way down again. So let's get rid of these blue lines and look at this. I mean, this is beautiful. What I like about Cardano is I still really believe in its future. And it's definitely no longer a low cap altcoin. It's definitely a blue chip. 
<coughs> but look at this nice rounding. Mmm, that's juicy. I mean, the bottom, you can't tell if this is the actual bottom. When we were talking on our pre-stream before, think of the bottom. You ever been swimming in like a lake? And the bottom's kind of murky and muddy, and it's hard to tell where the true bottom is. As you put your foot down, you can feel it's kind of around there, but it gets really cold and murky. And that's what the bottom feels like. You don't know where the true bottom is, but you know you're around it, right? Yeah. Could it keep going down? Well, this roundness is usually a sign of a strong resistance level. And sure, it could go down further, but juicy. I like it. Okay, let me look up, see if we, we have some more guesses. Oh, my gosh, we have Pete D is our winner here with Jeremy Allaire. Great job. Here we go. Jeremy Allaire retweeted. So Jeremy Allaire, he's the C or co-founder and CEO of Circle. Open interest platforms, crypto, Bitcoin, globalism, human and civil rights. Circle is the maker of USDC. And he retweeted the first ever Euro C bridge or decentralized bridge is now live. <coughs> At Circle Pay's newest stable coin can now be bridged to the XFIN official and one chain. Big news. Even retweeted by Jeremy Allaire. So, yes, Pete, um, I have your telegram. Um, just shoot me a quick telegram message and I'll get your wallet address. Uh, send me your wallet address and I will get you your 251. Um, you can use MetaMask or if you have <coughs> if you have it connected to the one chain. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure you know. All right. So let's get into what are some of your picks that you guys want to look in? Um, Fosco says, he said, first is Jeremy Allaire. Did I miss? I'm showing, Jer uh, Pete's Frank Von Woodenberg was just right after Pete D saying it. I don't see. Yeah. That's the first I see of it. All right. What projects do you want to, the ICO, the IDO of what was in 2017 switched to crypto? <coughs> Ada? No, it wasn't 2017. It was before that um when we have months of accumulate just yeah frank you, you were i know really close on that one um so what projects are you excited about that you're looking at that you want us to research together i allocated some time on today's stream to do that and this gives you an idea of how i start my research now, part of the reason I created this channel, when I was just an investor, like all of you, this time last cycle, I knew that the team was foundational to the success of a project. And so I would search for like AMAs with the different teams, and sometimes I could find them, but sometimes the interviewer asked stupid questions, didn't ask good questions that I wanted to be asked. And so I had to just... <sighs> You know, I would try to message them on like uh, Twitter or find something on Telegram or their Discord in their group. And I'd end up talking to an admin. The admin's like, oh, let me see if I can find that out. The admin never knew <coughs> the Telegram. And so it was frustrating. So I, I thought, you know, if I really want to get into who is running these projects, I have to start a YouTube channel. But I also had to wait to, well, to where I felt like I knew what I was like a system that I could talk about that I felt could benefit people, right? Because there's endless channels out there where you can just hear what the news is, which sometimes we cover a little bit of news, but overall we're sharing a philosophy that I know works, right? So if you look at a lot of the major channels, are they wealthy from being investors? Now the big channels make amazing money from having channels, right? They get sponsorships. They get things given to them, all kinds of stuff. And they make a lot of money from that. But are they good at investing? And are they sharing a philosophy that can lead people to success? And I didn't see that. 
I still don't see that. That isn't me, and I, I don't watch a lot of other channels. I watch a lot of them because I get a lot of news items and events. I'm a big fan of Coin Bureau. has some of the best information out there. Guy from Coin Bureau is incredible. Um, I Yeah, his how he processes and shares so much research on like a daily basis, I, I don't even understand. That guy is a machine. He's amazing. Um, one of the channels I most strongly recommend in crypto is also looking at his. But he doesn't talk about the investment side, the principles of investing. He's actually pretty conservative. So I, I wanted to share this idea while creating a channel that we could get some of the project teams to join us. Now, <coughs> we have 21,000 subscribers. You know, if we had 500,000 subscribers or 400,000 subscribers, I'd be able to get just about every team, any project out there to come join us. As it stands, I've reached to get some of them, but not all of them. All right, let's take a look. Since, okay, let me make sure. KDA, please. Why don't we start with that? So first thing I do is Coin Gecko. Now I like Coin Market Cap just as much. Sometimes it's better. It just takes longer to load. So Kadena. So looking at Kadena, let me share my screen. And here's the comment from Ivan. KDA, please. So the first thing I do is Coin Gecko or Coin Market Cap. I find them okay. Current market cap is three hundred and ten million. They have 19.8% of their supply in circulation. I go to Max History <laughs> and I see, okay, how long have they been out? So their tokens being tracked since, and usually when it starts being tracked is usually, <coughs> but not always, pretty close to the launch date. So January 2020. Okay, so it's been out for a little while. Its token did horrible. And then it did tremendous, actually, at a really interesting time, right around when Metaverses did. This is what I call the Mark Zuckerberg pump. And went tremendously all the way to like $25, and it's now down at $1.50. So then the next thing I do, I love all these links right to it, so I make sure I'm getting to the right website. Dana.io, and I start reading some about it so I can get a feel for what this is. Okay, safer smart contracts, no cost transactions, energy efficient at scale, industrial scalability. So looks like a blockchain, probably built on top of Cosmos, which they say is one of their partners. Okay, I don't know, they also say Polkadot here, maybe some collaboration with Binance. Okay. So sometimes pretty people use the word partners pretty loosely. It's like if they're paying Chainlink for data, they're like, yeah, we partnered with Chainlink. Nah, they're a customer of Chainlink. That's different than a partner. Okay, the complete package. Kadena is the only platform offering a complete decentralized infrastructure. Your teams get the full capabilities of crypto with the tools to go from the concept to launch in days instead of months. So DeFi, NFT payments, Okay, so they're a blockchain. Some news articles. Kadena launches $100 million grant program for Web3 builders. Okay, so clearly, if <clears throat> let's pretend I don't know anything about Kadena, I just started to get a feel for Kadena. Usually, under about, that's when I start finding about who the founders are. Okay, so our founders. Prior to the launch of Kadena in 2016, our founders were already leaders in blockchain and cryptocurrency solutions. Stuart Popejoy led JP Morgan's emerging blockchain group. Okay, so that's a big deal. This guy isn't just somebody who started out of his garage and doesn't know anything, doesn't have any connections. Will Martino was re recruited from his role as the tech lead for the SEC's cryptocurrency steering committee. Okay. That's some really good connections there and a really good background. Together, Stuart and Will built JP Morgan's first blockchain known as JPM coin. Heard of JPM coin. So fantastic background. Ah, interesting. Scott Stormnetta left and partner Stuart Haber discussed their timestamp for electronic documents, which they developed in the Belcor Research Laboratory 
in Morristown 20 years before Bitcoin was born. Okay, so fair to say top level team here. That's about as top level as you get or pretty close to top level you get. So Ivan, good suggestion. Let's go back to price. What's the chart looking like? Is now a good time? Let's see. Well, nice rounded bottom. No. Let's see. I'm going to pull it up on this. KDA. Let's see what kind of history we have. Okay. Uh, let's get this so we can see it well. Yeah, this might even be. Let's see if it goes. Okay, so the bottom bottom is right at $1.35. It touched that again here. Hasn't quite touched it here, so this is a higher low so far. It might be preparing to go off to the races in the coming number of months. Now, some concerns. Only 19.8% of the toll tokens are in circulation. We don't yet know anything about their vesting schedule. They are in the Cosmos ecosystem. Okay, that's fine. So Discord is not a bad place to go. Their Telegram. What you're looking for for a little bit deeper research now is what their token vesting schedule look like, looks like. Because there could be a big pitfall. There could be all of a sudden 10% of the tokens released to the foundation, which then sells them, or 10% list. Um, all of a sudden released to pre-sell investors, which they might have bought those at $0.10. Cents. So at $1.50, they're at a 15x, and then might then dump them on the market, tanking the price. Barring some kind of concern with what the token vesting looks like, um, that looks like a pretty attractive price. What do you guys think? <clears throat> all right, that was a fantastic suggestion. Let's look at what else we have. On Steve's asked for Senso. All right, so we're starting once again with Senso here. So Senso or Sensorium XR.com is their website. We'll go to that in a second. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is go to Max. We're going to look at their market cap. We don't know. Their total supply and their max supply. I hate it when these things are different and we have no circulating supply. So sometimes I go to coin market cap. <laughs> so I need to figure out what the heck is going on here. Get some real numbers. And sometimes coin gecko is light on those numbers. Here we go. Why does Coin Gecko have the number, or Coin Market Cap has the numbers, and Coin Gecko doesn't? I don't know. So, twelve million is the current market cap. Fully diluted market cap of one hundred twenty-seven million, which tells me about ten percent is in circulation. In fact, you can see that right here. Okay, so that gives us a baseline. Let's look at it. Wow, they've gotten savage. Well, we like to buy cheap, and it is cheap. Is it cheap enough? Do we believe in the project? We don't know that yet, right? So we got to start looking into that. Sensorium XR. Okay. Pretty website with an animation. It doesn't cost all that much today to get a pretty website with an animation. Let's see what they do. We bring you connections and experiences out of this world. Well, I like connections and experience out of this world. What the hell does that mean? Sensorium is building the most advanced digital metaverse. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay. Empty Reels Parties. So, some kind of a metaverse project. Well, interesting. Those are some cool looking avatars. Huh. What do we know about it yet? Not all that much yet, but... Okay, they're in the metaverse realm. 
when they when they post these like oh you know forbes and financial times a lot of times what they did was they paid for an article to be run in there sometimes that's the case sometimes that's not usually in crypto that is the case okay new era in entertainment communication let's see if we can find out about the team because let's look at partnerships and see what they say here Say lack of content is holding the industry back. Proud members of VR AR Association, AIXR. I don't know enough about that industry to know who those are really. Sensorium Corporation partnership with Epic Games, okay, has launched one of the world's top initiatives for Unreal Engine developers. Our creators program is designed to unleash the creativity of talented Unreal Engine developers to join efforts in building the most advanced social VR platform. Okay, so they're in the metaverse space. We don't know anything about their team yet. They're saying some of the right things, so that's good. What can we see about the team? Let's see what we can see. Sensorium sets fire to the metaverse by burning 1 billion Senso tokens. That seems like, okay. Mm. Investing in the metaverse, what the future holds is real estate, crypto, and NFTs fuel growth. Will we be happier in the metaverse? Interesting. Share more press releases. So they, they, they have the Senso DAP as of October. Wait, no, that's the 10th of last month. Huh, interesting. We don't yet know anything about the team. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything about the team. Maybe it's in the blog section of this. Nothing about the team. Hard to tell from this, right? So the next step that I would do, go to YouTube and I would search for Sensorium and I would see, I would, sp and then I would look for AMAs if there's an AMA. I'd want to hear who the team is, how they talk about it, because the team makes a difference. What's their background, how good they are. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, price then so going back here we're seeing a nice decline here so they they had the facebook pump the uh, mark zuckerberg pump and so they did incredible they pulled back tremendously so the truth is a lot of things are at or near the bottom so it's not only the projects with good teams that can do well when the rains come and everything goes up even the projects with crappy teams but it seems like maybe the low is in, maybe. that See this nice rounding bottom? That doesn't mean it can't do this number and then go back farther down, do this number. And it, it likely will do this if, like, the whole market goes down. And who knows? Like, <clears throat> if all the countries in the world came out and banned, like, altcoin trading, probably it would do that. I mean, just about everything would, and that that's always a risk. Not likely, because then the politicians would probably get booted by their voters in the following election, but it is a risk that could happen. So great suggestion on that one. Bob the Builder, do I know when Devio Coin is coming out? Possibly in a couple months. Possibly. So I heard that. Um, so there's some good things happening with Devio behind the scenes that, um, one of my friends, um, took one of the founders to lunch and, um, yeah, I got to talk to him for an hour or two and yeah, got some good insights that he then shared with me. It's not like I can't call the CEO and talk to him cause I made a sizable, um, contribution. I just try 
not to do that very often and by not very often like once every six months or so right i don't want to play that card and over abuse that card all right so uh, they, um he's talked about actually joining us for an ama after some things get released soon and so probably we'll have him back on the channel soon for devio <laughs> vaccinated anti-vaxxer i i got weak i bought 400 dollars worth of terra 2 i have no idea what to think about terra 2 i can't say i got wrecked on terra i yeah terra luna i had you know 70 plus thousand dollars worth that i had only paid five thousand dollars for but that five thousand i got from something else that was vastly in profit so and i did take i don't know 1500 2500 out so the truth is i was up on the situation but my 70 something thousand turned into like 20 cents unfortunately for me um so yeah i get some terror too i yeah um i i don't know if i'll ever touch terror again um which is what garrett b is seeing saying Vasco is saying he put the correct CEO two times before Pete D. Um, Vasco, I'm not seeing it. it. It didn't come through on mine. Um, for some reason, uh, it, it came through on yours, but it did not come through on mine. So I don't know. I can only go off of what comes first on mine. And don't know why. I don't think those even showed up. I don't see the right answer come through at all from you. I don't know why I did that, Vasco. Vasco, you had something from the pre-stream that you wanted to look at. What was that one? Um, because that hasn't come through either. The only one I'm seeing is this comment here. But I'm not seeing any other from you. And maybe it's filtering for some reason. I don't have any special filters on. All right. Speaking, of Edson, speaking of Ada, what about Sunday Swap? All right. So my experiences with Sunday Swap aren't great. I got a call from a good friend of mine deep in the ecosystem of Sunday Swap was talking to them because they were raising some pre-sell funds. And he's like, hey, man, I have an in. I can make a pre-sell investment in Sunday Swap. And uh, he said, they're selling the tokens at, I don't remember what the price was. And I said, well, how many tokens are there? And I was like, wait, what? That price they're quoting times the total number of tokens means that pre-sell, you're buying at a valuation of $75 million fully diluted market cap. That, they don't know what they're doing. That is not the right number for pre-sale early, early round investment. And then he's like, hey, well, I tried to go for it anyway, but then they contacted me and said, I could only do it if I put like $75,000 in with them or some minimum. And I was like, oh, man, th those numbers are off. Like they'll probably have some people come in, tell them those numbers suck and help them straighten this all out, but they're a mess. So, at the Cardano event that I went to last year, the Sunday Swap team was there, and they were also at, I think, the Bitcoin conference or something. I saw them roughly at some other event prior, but took the time to talk to them. So three of the founders were there walking around with their Sunday Swap shirts and stuff. So I went to talk to one of them, and not impressed, right? So maybe I'm a little bit snobby. I, did, I worked for a business consulting firm for years before i went into real estate and i was just like gosh this isn't the team that i'm looking for like these guys are kids and uh okay they like the tech they're passionate about the tech like their marketing i mean the logo's great whoever did their stuff that way nailed it i mean one of the best logos out there and the name sunday swap cool like sunday is a little bit hard to spell if you hadn't seen it so i didn't like that part of it but honestly their logo awesome talking to him we get interrupted by this short guy that comes up and whatever he has he thinks is so urgent totally interrupts us and the guy stops talking to me the founder and starts talking to this other dude completely writes off our conversation i was like 
Okay. But already I was unimpressed enough that I wasn't going to restart the conversation with him. I was just like, uh, number one, why, why is he then dismissing me to go talk to this other guy? Like, this is stupid. And, um, uh, and then my friend to one of the other co-founders was like, Hey, yeah. So I had talked to you guys about investing in the pre-sale. Oh, we need to do a pre-sale round. Well, yeah, you did. Here's the email. Oh, oh, well, that uh, uh, all that funds got turned into equity in the company that they can turn into tokens. And it got really iffy and questionable about, well, about that. I was like, these guys are a mess. So then Sunday Swap later had some kind of deal with uh, one of the launch pads on Cardano. Which one is it? The first launch pad that came out on Cardano. Tom Notch people and everything, right? And Sunday Swap had promised them a certain allocation. And then all of a sudden, uh, Sunday Swap changed the terms. See, I think they had promised them like $20,000 worth of allocation, but it was supposed to be at that like IDO price. When the price went crazy, they said, oh, yeah, we'll give you $20,000 of allocation. But so the price just 20x. So we're only going to give you like 1 20th the number of tokens, which was not the deal. I was like, these guys, business-wise, are a wreck. I want nothing to do with them. Have I used their swap? Yeah, I used their swap a couple times till I found MinSwap, right? So that's my experience with Sunday Swap. Now, that can't mean that they don't have really good people come in and take over and run it. Their marketing's good. They were the first one in the space talking about a DEX on Cardano. But gosh, the three founders, I'm just not impressed. And you know, speaking ill of people, I'm look, I'm I'm just telling you what I've seen. I like teams like Miria, right? Jonathan Teo. It comes from the billionaire Teo family. But Jonathan's not riding off of his dad's coattails. Jonathan has been out there and started all these different companies. Brilliant guy. And there's a difference when you talk to Jonathan Teo compared to the Sunday swap team. Like a complete difference, like not even close. So Sunday Swap, not my favorite experiences. Maybe I was just unlucky, caught them exactly the right time. Maybe somebody, a certain Cardano influencer, had gotten them to go out with and smoke a bowl with him during. So maybe it was high or something, but the conversation was not impressive. All right. We got another super chat. So let me jump to that just in time. What's up with spores? I want to have them on. They have... I haven't followed up again. They were actually supposed to get back with me, and they have not. Their price is totally, totally, totally in the tank, right? So their valuation is $453,000 market cap. Now, I did buy some more spores. Gosh, I think it was six weeks ago or something. Yeah, so I bought a bunch more spores, I think somewhere in here. Total risk, I like, I still like the team behind it. It's in an iffy situation that it could go. They're building a spores verse. So they did get back to me and told me they're building a spores verse and stuff. And I was like, hey, so tell me more about the spores verse and tell me about the utility of the token within the spores verse. It's great you're doing the spores verse, but like, are you going to make sure that the token holders can benefit from that? No response yet. So great question. Gosh, um, yeah, Vasco, I do not know why why not all your comments are coming through. That is really weird. Um, yeah, that hadn't come through. So Defina, Def so we looked at this with Paul, right? And so here's how I do research. So Defina Finance, that was probably your suggestion with Paul, or maybe it was someone else's. So the suggestion would have come from the previous week. I'm pretty impressed with a few things about this. Um, first of all, their backers, when I was looking at this, was really, really good. So let's just go through... Uh, let me share my screen so everyone can see it. All right. So first thing, gosh, there. Let's see if Coin Market Cap has better info. 
Market cap, 780,000. That's a really exciting market cap. Fully diluted market cap is only 2x at. Okay, I like those numbers a lot. A lot. This, well, it's a lot cheaper than it was. It was $9 back in just last November after the Metaverse pump from, boy, this price, way more attractive. Way more attractive. In fact, I think I had this one on my list to watch very closely. Now, it still looks like it's declining, right? Which was when we covered this on Thursday's episode, here was the concern. Still declining like this. That doesn't mean I'm not interested in this one. What really has me interested in this is we have this thing called, what is it called? I don't remember. Have you ever noticed if you're a guy in the dating world and you're and you have a really cute girlfriend that then you get hit on by like all these other cute girls they they call that pre-selection which means what the girls are doing is like hey if this girl is interested in him there must be something about him so we do this somewhat as investors too in a slightly different way Oh, it was down here. Look at the investors behind here. Here's what I liked about it. OKX Block Dream Ventures is invested in it. Huobi Ventures. Okay. So they have some good back backers behind it. I think this is Engine Starters logo. Uh, logo. So there's some good things. Moonwell. Okay. Cedify. I I like that. I like that enough. Um that I would probably be willing to take this risk. The only thing I didn't like about it is this. Now, what do we know about the team? I uh, Let's see if Vision will tell us anything about the team. Not seeing a lot about the team here. But you know what? I can totally add another camera so i'm going to You guys can't hear me with that sound, huh? Shoot. I didn't realize that. Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Oh, I should, you should be able to hear me now. Oh gosh. So that harp, <laughs> whole part of adding the camera. So maybe if I have both of them on at the same time, you can still hear me, right? Well, what a mistake that was. Sorry about that, guys. So Dafina Finance, there's a lot I like about it. My concern is the price heading down here. I wouldn't put more than like 50 bucks on it if I put any now, and I'm not going to. And I'm going to wait. I have time to be patient. There's lots of good deals out there. And see how low it goes because – and then later, if I did put money on this, it wouldn't be more than like 1000 or 2000 
And the reason is I like this narrative. There's going to be money that comes back into this narrative, even though I don't know about the team yet. Um, I would have to learn a lot about the team and really know that I like the team and their vision for me to put more than like a thousand or two thousand. And for me, a thousand to two thousand is just like an infinitesimally small fraction of my portfolio. So, you know, if I only had ten thousand dollars, I, you know, wouldn't be putting more than like fifty dollars in unless I knew a lot more about the team um, and the vision of it, which we don't have enough time to do that level of research here. But it's good enough that I would put something in it when when I see this being more rounded at the bottom. Okay. All right. Oh, we're over an hour. Gosh, that went by fast. Um, what else we got? What are my thoughts on Alex Becker? So... There's a place in every industry for, like, Dennis Rodman, right? I don't know if you all watched American basketball during the Michael Jordan time period, but I did. And there was this guy, Dennis Rodman. I think he played for San Antonio Spurs for part of that and later the Bulls. And he, he was loud, right? Alex Becker is loud, and he's uh, purposely antagonistic. He bashes on Cardano, which is stupid, but... He does that because he's just taking a position. He's taking, you know, a controversial position on purpose. Is he a good business person? Yes, he's a smart business person. Um, he does pretty well. He doesn't do as good, I think, as it makes it seem. And But he is smart. He's definitely smart. And um, he has a great sense of business. Um, and he's just being sometimes annoying on purpose because it's different and there's a place for different right and he's gone from you know not a lot of subscribers on youtube to gosh probably over a million by now i haven't watched one of his videos in a while it's got two i used to watch occasionally right but uh yeah i don't know he, he's a little much for me to watch very often though i like what he has going on like i like I like how he thinks generally a lot. Vasco shared with us a hey, great information. The FINA IDO price was 40 cents and the private was 25 cents. Wow. Wow. So those who got the FINA and took some profits here made a fortune. But now what they're doing is they're just dumping their tokens as they get them. And that's totally tanked the price. Um, if it survives, there's going to be a ton of money in this. Just a sec. If it survives, I mean, gosh, you know, if it goes to a $100 million market cap or more, uh, and that's a fantastic return. So great, great look. Thanks, Fosco. All right. That is everything I had to share today. I mean, we're out of time. We're past time. I appreciate you all joining us. I'm going to play that rap for everyone. Remember, the market is slow right now, and it just is. Just know that good decisions made during these pullbacks, they lead to life-changing ones when the market turns around. The rains will come again, and projects that have planted their seeds well and nurtured them will flourish. And those of you who have found, invested in, and been patient with those projects, your portfolios will flourish. Came into the space, chasing all of the games, chasing yeah. the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh... Shit, right before you could was going to buy when it was pouring like a rain Make it should I buy when it's down Don't chase the boats that I miss uh, Cause I always made the time in mind I take the one out Cause I'm patient like that And I'll wait for the right time I'll sell when it's high I'll buy when it's low They call me rich They call me smart I'm just a rainmaker Running the show Calculated investments I don't leave with my heart uh, Principles are simple To leave in a lot Buy when it's boring Just gotta be smart I sell when it's hype Like all the channels they pump me that's when I was selling your parabolic and dumping They call me rich, they call me smart 
I'm a rainmaker, making my own start. I'm with the future, learning the past. Make the time fly by, years going so fast. The game plan is mine, I'll own it now. When I reach the top, haters asking me how. Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love. And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck. Uh, the time is never better, the time like the present. The next five years is a gift, and it's feeling like heaven. I'm committed to learn. Studying to know that nothing comes easy, but when knowledge the game show, sticking out this run can soon become a bear market. Learning and growing, and when it's slow, would be the target. They say it's come out, Bitcoin is dead. The massive decreases can get to your head. Sticking around, the time is better. I'm strong like that, I'll let the others be fretters. Two years time, the ball will bring back the games. That makes it worth the effort, cause here comes the rain. So let's go, rainmakers, let's make it all happen. The goal of the hate, they the haters be crappy. I'm here for five years, let's do this together. The time is right, the time could be better They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own start I'm with the future, learning the past Made the time fly by, years going so fast This game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, hey, it's asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, Haters be hating, the time to slow down Addressing what to say when I'm wearing my crown They're chasing green candles like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger Helping me to push through I'm still human and sometimes it is rough And that's what makes me special Simply I stay tough Cause I'm a rainmaker Investments I love And I follow what I learn Not relying on luck uh.